I'm Lydia and this is Manny and we're part of the team here. So before I catch you up with what Manny's doing, I'll just mention safety very briefly. Um, we have on some glasses to protect our eyes. We have you positioned at a safe distance away from the stage. It's really unlikely that any glass would come onto the ground in front of you, but if it does, please don't touch it. It would probably be very sharp or very hot and we want you to leave here without a scratch. So with that being said, Manny just took what we call a gather from our furnace. Inside of here, it's about 2,000 degrees, and there's about 150 pounds of glass inside of there. Right now, he's rolling that fresh multi glass through a pile of what we call frit, and that frit is just finely crushed but densely colored glass. So he applies a couple of layers to make sure that the color is nice and vibrant and dense. And once he's got the amount of color that he's looking for, ooh, it looks like he's gonna add some beautiful little chips of blue. That's also just frit, it's just a different size. So you can see there's a pretty significant difference. The one that he applied earlier, this is actually gonna be a beautiful purple. It's kind of at the consistency of sand. It's gonna cover really, really evenly. Um, and then those larger chips of blue, those are gonna cover more like pebbles would something like that, you'll see the different sizes, different pieces he makes. So now that Manny has those two colors on there, he's gonna melt them together using the reheating chamber. And inside of there, there's no glass whatsoever. It's just a big barrel full of hot air. So we're able to use the reheating chamber throughout our process and you're gonna see us move back and forth to that chamber over and over throughout this demonstration. So it's really kind of the workhorse of the shop. Now that Manny has the appropriate amount of color on the end of that rod, he's gonna come over to this marbling table and he's just gently going to be rolling the glass across the table and smoothing it into an even and symmetrical shape. So timing is kind of everything to us. It's really important that um, we allow the glass to become nice and saturated with heat before we try to force it to change its shape or take on some kind of different form. So Manny's looking for all those chips to just kind of soften on the surface. And he heads over to that marbling table. That table is just cold steel and he's rolling the glass right across there to smooth out that shape and those colors. As soon as he has the shape that he's looking for, he's gonna trap a little bit of air inside of the blowpipe and the air is going to follow the path of least resistance right into that fresh molten glass. He stretches the bubble out a little bit and he's got pretty much a perfectly shaped bubble right inside of that little mass of glass. Awesome. So now that we have that beautiful bubble established, Manny's going to let that glass cool down. And the reason he's going to do so is because we're going to be gathering a little bit more material from inside of our furnace, and that's gonna give us plenty of glass to create a piece with. We're going to be making a votive to hold a small candle or tea light. And we want it to have some thickness to it. Glass has amazing optical qualities, and for something that's going to be projecting light, it's nice to have a little bit of thickness to the piece. It'll help it to kind of transmit and refract some of that light. So Manny's going to wind up a little bit more material. He's turning more aggressively. And he takes a seat inside of the bench. The first tool he's going to use is called the wooden block. That block is made of cherry wood and it's been soaking in water. And as soon as he touches it to the glass, a little layer of steam is produced. And the steam prevents the glass and the wood from sticking to each other. So he's just evened out the shape. And I'm gonna take this and work a pretty significant amount of heat into it 
Teamwork is a big part of what we do as glass blowers. It's really hard to blow glass by yourself. And you can get a lot more done and it's a lot more fun and also I think a lot more rewarding if you have a good team to work with. So I'm just trying to make sure that the glass is evenly heated and I'll hand it back to Manuel. And he's going to begin with a wooden block once again. So he's smoothing out that glass and we're going to start to inflate the bubble a little bit. Huh? Huh. He's going to stretch the glass a little bit using gravity. And the tool in his hand is called the jack. Those jacks are being used to make a little constriction in the piece that we call a neckline or a jackline. And that's going to be where later we free that bubble from the end of the blowpipe. So it's a really important part of the vessel. The jacks are perhaps one of our most versatile tools. We use them a lot throughout the process of blowing glass and we're going to get to know them pretty well. We'll use them several times throughout this demonstration. The jacks work best if they're a little bit worn and also if they've been lubricated with beeswax. So it's my job as Manny's assistant to make sure that the tool has the adequate amount of wax on it or that they're warm at different points in our process. So now that Manny has established that little neckline, he's going to be putting the piece inside of that mold. The mold is just being used to make sure that we make the votive the same size. Really what we're doing with the votive is we're making a color sample, something that we can reference later to make sure uh, that we know how different colors are going to react with one another. So we want all of the votives to be three inches in diameter, and so we just use the mold to, to help us to achieve that. Then he goes inside of there and he's turning really steadily. He's just barely blowing. Mostly he's just keeping pressure inside of that blowpipe. And he's really focusing more on the turning and the rotation of the, the rod. So he comes out. We've got a beautiful square bottom. And we're going to work together to just kind of seam up that lower edge, making sure that it's truly nice and flat. And he's using the jacks to guide the walls into shape. I'm using the wooden paddle. When he asks me to, to flatten the bottom, looks great. So now that we've completed that lower half of the vessel, I'm gonna make something that's called the punty. And the punty is going to be attached to the center of that bottom. And we're going to be removing the piece from the end of that blowpipe. This is going to allow us to shape up the top 50%. really important that Manny and I kind of coordinate our heat and our timing. The transfer to this rod is not going to go smoothly if our heat isn't just right. So he takes a flash, which is kind of a maintenance heat, and I deliver him this little punty, and he just gently connects it with the bottom of the piece. Wow. And we're turning in unison, trying to make sure that the the rod is truly centered on the bottom of that vessel. A little bit of water. Wow. And then a gentle tap and that piece comes right off. The reason that that happens so easily is because of something that we call thermal shock. Basically, with just a small amount of water right at that neckline, Manny's able to create a tiny fracture in the glass. And then with a light tap, it breaks free without a problem. So Manny takes a moment to double check and make sure that that piece is totally straight on the end of that rod. It's a really subtle thing that he's looking for, but it's very important. We want to make sure that the top and the bottom are both perfectly straight on there.
Annie's left hand is always in motion, keeping that glass rolling. So this is oftentimes the longest heat of the entire piece. That's because Manny's trying to heat up the coldest part of the bubble and make it the hottest part of the bubble. He wants to manipulate it. So this would be a really great opportunity if anybody has any questions, you could raise your hand and I'll do my best to answer it. Yeah. Are these pieces sold after the show or what? Everything that we make gets donated to different nonprofits throughout the Seattle area. So, so Manny has heated up that glass. make sure that he has a nice opening at the very top. He's grabbing the material and pulling it away from itself, thinning the glass. He's going to trim away some of that extra material that he doesn't want to include in the, in the piece. So, oftentimes there's a little bit extra material at the top of the vessel and we can just remove it gently by cutting it free. So now we have a nice clean opening at the top of the piece. Manny's gonna introduce a little bit more heat and then he and I are gonna work together to finish shaping this vessel. He's going to be using the jacks. He's gonna go inside of the opening. Ooh, cool, okay. He says, okay. Cool. So we're going to be adding a little clear accent at the top of the piece. I'm gonna touch this to the marble once, you don't need to flash though. So maybe cuts off a lot of that material. And then he gently trails that clear glass onto the rim of the piece. This is just gonna add kind of another element to that glass he wants to make it look like it has some nice weight at the top of the piece. We're gonna use a few different tools to kind of thin out that material. He's gonna be using the jacks and I'm gonna use a wooden paddle and we're gonna to work together to kind of seamlessly incorporate that band of clear with that colored glass that he starts with. So all the while we're finishing up shaping this top and adding that extra element, Manny's having to manage the temperature at that punty connection. He's going to trim a little bit of that clear material. Wants to make sure that it's a really straight and even line. As you can see that just falling right off of it. It's a small amount of glass, but Manny wants it to be a perfect little band of clear at the top of there. Awesome. So like I mentioned, he's having to manage the heat at both the top and the bottom of the piece. He makes sure that as he approaches that reheating chamber, he gives the vessel something that we call a flash. And the flash is just a maintenance heat. It keeps the piece attached to that punty rod. You also might notice that as Manny walks around the stage and moves from piece to piece of equipment, he never slams the rod down on the bench rail. He's very cautious and considerate about how he sets the rod onto the bench. If he sends a little bit too much of a vibration through the piece, the piece could come off the end of the rod. And he's using the jacks to straighten out that vessel. Sorry I'm in your way, but we're doing something called sandwiching the piece, squeezing it between two wooden paddles to true the top and the bottom. Beautiful. Yeah, cool. So now you can't even tell that there was a seam between the clear and the rest of the body of the piece. Manny used heat to his advantage and he just melted away that seam. It looks like um, it looks like they were a part of the same original mass. People. I'm just gently pressing these two paddles together and Manny's gently guiding the sides of that bubble into shape. Beautiful. 
So even though we used the mold to get the appropriate diameter, there was a lot of work that needed to be done by hand. So even though you see that something is mold blown, don't think that it was done by a machine necessarily or it was made, oh nice. Uh -huh. Don't think that it was like made really easy by the mold. There's still so much time and consideration and thought that has to go into the shaping of the piece. Cool. So Manny's going to be removing that piece from the end of that rod. And this is really all about timing and kind of considering the heat. He's giving the piece a few flashes. And again, the flash is just a maintenance heat, making sure that the piece is a stable temperature. He's gonna head over to the bench and he's gonna get just a tiny drop of water to put right at that connection point between the piece and the puppy. And he's just going to gently tap that rod. Wow. And it comes right off. Mm -hmm. And then with that little torch, he's gonna be able to just very, very lightly make sure that there's no blemish or no kind of rough spot on the bottom of the piece. It won't scratch the table, it won't scratch your finger. It's gonna be perfectly smooth. Nice work. So this piece needs to cool down very slowly. Inside of this oven, it's about 950 degrees. And everything we make on this stage goes into this oven at the end of its, you know, when we're done creating it, put it inside of the oven, and then gradually overnight, all of these pieces are going to be brought down to room temperature. And that helps to ensure that they don't go through any kind of shock or stress as they're coming uh, from a very high temperature down to a pretty low temperature. Thank you. 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 Thank you.